Hello, in this video we will be talking about price value mix, how it's applied, how it's defined, and also the theory behind the calculation. Before we jump into price value mix or PVM uh, examples and definitions, uh, let's take a look and try to frame up a problem that we're trying to solve. So here we have a uh, uh, quick and dirty dashboard uh, where in this chart here we're f we're trending uh, revenue in a blue line and revenue last year in an orange line and we could see that the blue line stays kind of flat uh, for the 10 weeks uh, that we have uh, as a frame for our analysis so the blue line kind of stays flat whereas the yellow line or orange line for last year revenue we saw that around uh, beginning of March uh, starting to go up. So if I were to look at the difference between revenue this year and last year, um, we will see that uh, it's it's actually going to be negative. So we could see here that this year revenue was 1.45 million, last year 1.48 million, so we have a negative 2.1% variance, the difference between this year and last year revenue. In this chart, we're breaking it down by different product groups. Obviously, that is obfuscated. I added a color for um, to help us understand whether this is uh, uh, not only the variance um, changed, but uh, revenue change, but also what happened to the margin. So, yellow uh, green bars margin actually went up. Uh, red bars margin went down. So, unfortunately, in the product where margin actually went up, we sold less and the product that, uh, where the margin actually went down was sold more. So here, I'm looking at these bars, they represent the difference in value, sometimes we call it uh, year over year, I mean difference in revenue, right? And we're saying for all of this bar, for all of these products, um, uh, for the 10 weeks of 2017, uh, am I up or down? And we could see that uh, some of them are up, uh, group one, and a lot of them are down. The problem with this report, however, is uh, although I see uh, by product, I could also do it by channel, uh, I could use a variety of different uh, slices to understand that variance. So it gives me uh, an idea of where the issues are, but it doesn't explain why. And why would I have uh, a positive variance uh, versus negative variance? Typically, if you think about it, we have two levers that, uh, that define that. Usually that means that if I sold the same amount of products, but I raised the price, so if I sold 100 uh, widgets yes, uh, last year and I sold 100 widgets this year, but my price went up, then obviously my revenue would have gone up as well. Um, so um, price has an impact or there's a price element that explains that variance. The other side of it is I could have kept the price the same, but my volume has come down. So if my price was the same, $1 per widget, but uh, last year I sold 100 widgets and this year I only sold 50, then obviously my revenue uh, would come down as well. So if I charge less or if I sell less or more, uh, those changes in price and in volume would um, contribute to the difference in, in revenue. Okay, so these two components, price and volume, are pretty easy to understand. There is a third one that's maybe not as easy to understand, so let me frame it up for you right now. So the third one is, um, let's say I'm selling five different widgets and I did not change the price of those widgets this year versus last year, and my total volume of widgets is still the same. Let's say I'm, I'm still selling 100 total widgets this year versus last year. However, I'm selling more high-priced widgets this time around uh, versus what I sold last time. So even though the price per widget didn't change and the volume didn't change, total volume, but the volume per each item has changed. So the volume of high-priced widgets went up and volume of low-priced widgets went down. So that scenario um, is captured in the mix. So when we talk about uh, how did the mix change, we're talking about 
um, the, the distribution of low price volume uh, items versus high price volume. So overall, if we look into our, our total uh, general formula, we see that we can define our price volume mix as uh, price impact, volume impact, and mix impact. So just to summarize, revenue this year minus revenue last year, sometimes we will call it uh, year, year over year, uh, revenue variance, um, and uh, in this case I'm using revenue last year, it could be revenue plan or forecast, so some sort of target value, right? So we're trying to understand the variance between um, these two uh, types of revenue, and uh, normally for revenue we would have three buckets that drive that variance, either price, volume, mix. Price means um, if we didn't change anything, other than price, kept the volume the same as it was last year, what would the contribution of price be? Volume means if we kept the price constant to last year and only the volume changed, what would the contribution of that bucket would be? be? And then here is the contribution of um, type of product that we're selling, high uh, value products, high priced products versus low priced products. Now let's take a look at a couple of examples uh, so that it makes a little bit more sense. So uh, here in this table we're looking at different product groups, their revenue year over year or variance. And uh, what we do here is in this chart we're breaking it down. So in our case uh, what happened is the price went up. So if the volume stayed the same and we just looked at the uh, change in price contribution, it actually um, when price went up on average by 30, you know, price contribution is $37 million. And uh, this almost never happens when you have a price hike this big uh, to see a volume also go up. So uh, we call it the favorable business condition. Uh, that means the entire category is growing. So, um, or the demand is growing and uh, we can get away with raising the price without that hurting our volume. Uh, the mix uh, did not change much, so we're selling the distribution of high versus low priced items stayed uh, relatively the same. And I added a couple of more things here for new products and discontinued products, just so that we're comparing apples to apples in our price volume mix. Um, or a lot of times this piece would get uh, bundled into mix. So there's several ways to implement it. Um, let's take a look at the next one. So the next one is more a more likely scenario. So what happens in this scenario is we hiked up the price and what happens then is uh, due to the price elasticity, the demand shrinks when the price increases. And what we're trying to do when we play with prices, we're trying to hike it up uh, as much as we can get away with. So basically we're trying to make sure that the green, the price bar here is much bigger than the loss in volume, right? And obviously we don't want to get anything negative from the mix side as well. So this is a most likely scenario, the price goes up, volume comes down. Um, now let's take a look at the situation when we have a price drop. So again, if we sell a product and we drop the price, um, uh, if nothing happens with the entire category, kind of people still need that product, um, normally what we would uh, see is price comes down and then the volume would shoot up, right? So if we are being smart with our price um, discounting, we're going to drop it just enough to induce that big spike in volume so that my overall variance would be positive. Lastly, uh, not lastly, we have one more slide. Uh, now let's take a look at the bad business conditions. So bad business conditions is when we drop the price, so you see the price went down, and we still suffer uh, a drop in volume. So when that happens is either when my competition drops the price more than I did, or sometimes the overall demand for category goes away. So for example, right now we uh, are enjoying very low gas prices because nobody's driving. So um, I could drop the price some, but it's not enough. You know, people are driving much less, so even though I'm dropping the price, the demand for volume is just not there.
And lastly, let's take a look at what I call a bad mistake. Um, uh, I would have to say bad mistake uh, with air quotes, but uh, normally when you see something like this, a lot of times uh, this is a mistake. So what happened is brand, you know, somebody made a decision to raise the price. However, the uh, my competition did not raise the price or maybe have dropped the price. Um, so I did not pay attention to what's happening in the in the category. I dropped, I bumped up the price. My price price has increased. However, it caused a huge drop in volume. So this happens in highly elastic situations when the when the price um, of a of a of a commodity uh, influences um, even a small change in price uh, greatly influences the uh, the demand on the product and the volume of sales. Now is the fun part. I wanted to cover the math uh, before I uh, talk about the formula itself. So let's uh, do some definitions. So uh, every time we see RTY, revenue this year, uh, RLY would be revenue last year, V will stand for volume, number of units sold this year and last year, P will stand for price, so price this year and price last year. So this is the entire math that, that uh, explains uh, our price volume mix calculation. I will go line by line and explain how it works. In the description of this video, I will post a link to a, a blog post where I break down this math as well, so it's going to be easier to, to follow. Uh, you're welcome to click on the link and read my um, blog post as well, so we could uh, zero in on the math. So right now I'm just going to run through this pretty quickly. So in this line, we're just saying that um, uh, in this line, we're just saying that uh, basically restating the same thing. Difference in revenue is comprised of price, volume, and mix components. So if we defined uh, revenue as price times volume, right? So if I have, uh, if my widget is costing $1, or uh, I sell it for $1, the price is $1, and I sell 100 of them, then my revenue will be 100. So in this line here, I will state that uh, revenue this year, RTY, is equal to price this year times uh, volume this year. And then I do the same for uh, the revenue last year. Then if I wanted to define the variance, then I just write this instead of the actual variables here and I end up with this line. So the variance in revenue is price this year times price volume this year minus price last year times volume last year. So I just replace these with, the, with uh, their definitions. Now this is another uh, part of the uh, substitution we need to introduce. So we're introducing delta P, so change in price. So change in price is price this year minus price last year. And we're also introducing delta V, that's change in volume volume this year minus volume last year. So if I know my price last year, I can add the change in price to get my price this year. Right? So uh, what I've done then is I took this line here and I rewrote it. So instead of using price this year, I'm using everywhere last year. So price this year is plus last year plus delta, volume this year is price is volume last year plus delta volume and I'm deducting the same as I did here. So uh, and then what I do is I just multiply and solve this equation and uh, I end up with this thing here on the right. So you will notice that the first part of this equation is cancelled out by the by the last part of this equation. So at the end of the day, we're just left with these components. Change in revenue is the price that I had last year times the change in volume, and that's going to be the volume impact. Change in price times volume of last year, that'll be the volume impact. And then the change in price times change in volume. And that will be the um, mix impact. So to summarize, for us to calculate um, the price volume mix, 
uh, we need to know the change in price and change in volume between this year and last year and then we need to know uh, the starting values for volume uh, for volume last year and the uh, price last year so if I have those pieces available for me I can then quickly calculate this calculation and implement um, HR that looks like this so um, we're at the end of this video so uh, before I uh, wrap up uh, I will put another link into the description of this video so this video is more of a theory on how price volume mix um, calculation works why it's set up this way the math behind it and some examples of how it's used I will also post a link to my blog post where I actually implement uh, this approach using Power BI. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, please come again soon for the next one. Thanks. Bye.